Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here and continuing the topic from the previous discussion. So let's say consider a higher order system that is a naught y of n plus a1 y of n minus 1 plus a2 y of n minus 2 and this is equal to this is equal to b naught x of n uh, plus b1 x of n minus 1. So consider this system. Now I told you what do you have to do? The first and the foremost thing that you do is you take y of n at one side and the others on the other. So my equation would be y of n this is equal to b naught x of n plus b1 x of n minus 1 then you have a minus a1 y of n minus 1 minus a2 y of n minus 2 and this would be whole multiplied with what? this would be whole multiplied with a 1 over a0 so now I would have to do what? I would have to make the system, make the block diagram for this particular equation. So again, as I told you, you do what? You take your input that is x of n on one side. You take your y of n on the other side. So and in between these two we have now operations. So have a look, first of all x of n would be multiplied with a b naught. So this is multiplied with a b naught. So over here we have a b naught times x of n now. Fine. It is added with a b1 times x of n minus 1. So which means we have a differentiator involved. Uh, sorry, yeah, the difference involved. So here we go. This is the difference. Now this is your, over here you have a x of n minus 1, right? And this x of n minus 1 would now be multiplied with a b1. So over here I would have a b1 the multiplication factor fine and these two are added these two are added so let me add them let me add them so this is if my representation and I hope I'm doing it correct yes and now what do you have the output so now coming to the output side you need a y of n uh, minus 1 so let me take the uh, difference of this so you have a y of n minus 1 at this particular point this is multiplied with a negative a1 this is multiplied with a negative a1 so what do you have over here I would have negative a1 y of n minus 1 now I need another difference y of n minus 2 so I need to have another difference of this particular thing so over here I would have a n y of n minus 2 and now this is multiplied with a negative a2 now these two are also added now these two are also added wait a minute wait a minute first of all I would add these two you know right so over here I would have a plus I would have an adder over here right so these are these two are added now these two are also added first is the, this is the addition for these two this is the addition for these two now for this minus sign what do you have this minus is already gone but you have to add now these two so now these two are added as well this is your plus sign fine and now what do you have you have to uh, finally, finally you have to multiply with a one over a naught to get your output. So this is finally my one upon a naught, and this is finally my output. So this is the block diagram of this system. Okay. Now uh, this was a general second order system. Now if we talk about generally, generally about an nth order system, an nth order system. So how did we write it? How did we? Right. So, so let me tell you, we wrote it in this particular form that when k was running from 0 to n, it was a k y of n minus k 
and on the other side we had k running from 0 to m we had a bk x of n minus k right and now if I need y of n on one side so I told you how to do it you know so you can take k is equal to 0 first and then k is equal to 1 or 2n you separate it so I am writing it directly that my y, y of n would be 1 my y of n this would be equal to what? 1 upon a naught 1 upon a naught and k running from 0 to m what do you have? bk x of n minus k and then minus k running from 1 to n and, 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 and y of n minus k so this is the system that is an nth order general system and I have to draw the block diagram for this particular system now so have a look now have a look at the steps I told you what to do I told you what to do to take your x of n the input at one side the y of n the output at another side what do you have first bk is multiplied right so which means that this would be going on from b0 is first multiplied to x of n so b0 is multiplied to x of n right then you have what this is delayed by one unit so when this was for n is equal to 0 when n is equal to 1 you have an x of n minus 1 so this is now your x of n minus 1 and now this is being so wait a minute now if this is my x of n minus 1 now this is being multiplied with what with a b1 fine then for n is equal to 2 you have an x of n minus 2 which means that now over here I have an x of n minus 2 and now this is being multiplied with a value b2 fine and similarly this goes on and on and on and on and let me write the final one the final one would be this is different the derivative and over here I would have what I would have an x of n minus k x of n minus l, m when k would be equal to m and this would be multiplied with a bm this would be multiplied with a b m isn't it like this now what do you have you have to add all of them together isn't it like this so so let me add all of them together let me add all of them together so this is how you add all of them together so this was for this x of n sign now what do you have for the y of n sign have a look so this would now be uh, a, a y of n minus k so this would be what let me give the negative to the input okay to, uh, and I missed an a k over here I missed an a k over here yeah this was what I was missing so let's say I give the negative with the a k so in the first what do you do is you have an x of when k is equal to 0 then you have y of n so this would be multiplied with an e naught right not 0 because k is running from 1 so when k is 1 so you have an x of n minus 1 y of n minus 1 so I have my y of n minus 1 over here and this would be multiplied with a negative a1 fine then what do you have you have n is equal to 2 you have the differentiation you have the difference this is now y of n minus 2 this would be multiplied with a negative a2 fine and similarly for negative a3 and this and this and this system goes on and on and on I don't have space over here so this goes on and on until and unless that this particular input this becomes y of n minus capital N so if this is y of n minus capital N this would be multiplied with a multiplication factor negative a n and then what do you do so of course you have to add them all together you have to add them all together so now uh, these are all added now what do you have 
this is for this thing, this is for this thing, the negative has been included with AK, you have to add these two together. So now I have to add these two together, so I add these two together in this way. Fine, and finally my output would go like this, but first it has to pass through a 1 over A0. 1 upon A0. So this is a general nth order system representation. And this system that I have drawn, this is called a direct form 1. This is called a direct form 1 representation. That I have what? That I have the equation and I have drawn the block diagram directly from the given equation. So this is direct form 1. Now if you see, if I tell you what is the advantage of this system or what is this information that is this block diagram giving to me so if you see this is a combination of two systems this being the first system this being the second system one system on the left side the other system on the right side somewhere here in the middle is the junction this is let's say the junction this is let's say the junction in between these two systems. This is system 1, this is system 2. Now we are studying this system for LTI system. So what do we have? The additional information for LTI systems? These two systems are now connected in cascade form, in series form. So in LTI system, if two systems are connected in series, what do we have? Yes, I'm asking you, what do we have if two systems are connected in series? Not here. Yes, please. Come on. If two systems are connected in series, LTI system, what do we have? Yes, you're right. It is independent of the order of the system. It is independent of the order they are connected, which means if you have system 1 on one side, left side, system 2 right, the input is given, the output is taken, and now if you have system 2 on the left, system 1 on the right, the same input is given, you have the same output. This is what we have from the properties of LTI systems if they are connected in cascade form and we've seen them in great detail in the previous videos. So this is what I would do. This is what I would do. What have we seen that if, you know, this is your system 1, this is your system 2, if you have your input over here, you have your output over here. These two systems are LTI. Now what do you do? You have the same LTI systems. If you move your 2 over here, you move your 1 over here. If you have your input provided to 2 now, and now you take the output from 1, so what do you have? This is the property of this LTI system, that these two outputs would be one and the same thing if provided the input are the same. That's it. That's it. So this was the conclusion that I was talking about to derive a conclusion from this particular topic. So now what do I do? I interchange the order of the systems. I do what? I interchange the order of the systems. So let me remove this, right? Yes, so, so yes, not this, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, so now if you are uh, seeing a change with your quality, this is because that I ran out of charge in my camera. So now this is my, my, my mobile phone recording, okay? So, what we were discussing is that system 1 is on the left side, system 2 is on the right. Now I take system 2 to the left. So starting off with this adder. You have this adder, you have a 1 over A0. Fine, this is now given to your delay circuit. Fine, and then you have uh, a, over here you have what? Uh, negative A1. This is given over here, right? Then you have another delay circuit, and this is now multiplied with a negative A2. And now this is given to another adder which is over here. Fine, and similarly going on and on, you have another which is now multiplied with a negative an, 
and uh, this is also added. So I'm representing this with a dotted line because this is what we don't know. And this was my something over here, some point. Right? Now this is the junction point. Now what do I have? I make this system on this side. So this was input was coming, it was given to, it was first passed through a B naught to an adder. Right? Then it was, it came over here as well to a delay circuit, passed through B1, another adder over here, and another adder over here. Fine. Now this, another delay circuit, now this is B2, and another adder over here. Fine. Now coming down, 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 you have another delay circuit. And similarly, this is multiplied with an BM, and, and, and you have it like this. So the junction point remains as it is. This is now your junction point that we talked about over here. Your input is provided over here. Your output is provided over here. Now you may have a confusion that over here we had this X of N, over here this had Y of N, so now we were multiplying this and that. So you may have different sort of confusions about the input and the output. But the thing is, whatever is the input, you can just be taking it an X of N. Now have a look over here. You would say that this system is reverse. Over here you had something different being provided to this plus and now over here something different is being provided to this plus. Similarly, at the output it was coming from something else side. Now this is coming from some. So that is not the case. The case is that we have seen it from mathematical representations. We have done what? We have used the property of the system. You don't confuse it with an X of N and Y of N. Whatever the input is over here, whatever the output is over here, if the same input is applied over here and if these two systems are LTI, then this particular output will also be over here. So this is what we've used the cascading property. And now what we have done, we have done it from one picture, we have made another picture. So this picture is called a direct form 2. Direct form 2. Now the thing is that I was talking about in the beginning of the video that uh, we could have you know, a, a final conclusion in the end. So that is over here. Have a look. Just have a look. At the junction point. At the junction point, if you have, so over here we would have the same value, right? Because this particular value is coming, right? So this is being fed into one delay circuit. This is being fed into another delay circuit. So which means that the same value is being fed into two different delays. So the output of these two would be again the same and these are again being fed into two delay circuits. Now the output of these two would be again the same further into two delay circuits. So what can I do is that I can take the junction point and I, out of two delay circuits I could make it. One delay circuit. That's it. So this would be my ultimate advantage of using this, this, this sort of a representation. So let me remove this and now I will tell you that how it is. Now what do I do is your input is coming. This is your input. This is incoming over here. Fine, it's being multiplied, oh, wait, 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 it's given, it's given to this particular adder. Fine, now this is being multiplied with a 1 over A naught. Now this is being multiplied with a 1 over A naught. And then over there it's multiplied with a B naught. And finally uh, this adder. And over here you have your output. So over here it is also multiplied with A, B naught. So what do we have? This was my junction point, let's say. So if this is my junction point, what do I have to do? I would make it a, a single, a single delay circuit instead of the two delays. So let me remove the marker caps first. So over here have a look. In case of these two, I have one delay circuit. And this is my delay circuit. Fine. Now what do you have? One input over here, one input over there. 
this and this. Over here you have an adder, over here you have an adder. Fine, over here you also have an adder. Now these two are also added over here and over here. Now the multiplication factor, don't you miss it. So this is your negative A1, this is your B1. Fine. Now the second delay circuit, so for these two I would make one circuit. Fine. Now what do you have? One input over here, given to an adder, given over here. One input over here, given to an adder, added over here. The multiplication factor over here is negative A2, over here is B2. And similarly, this system goes on and on, B3, B4, B5, A3, A4, A5, till you have your final case. This is your delay circuit. It comes to an adder over here, and it, it gets it over here. Similarly, over here, it comes to an adder over here, and it gets it over here. The multiplication factor over here is a negative a n. The multiplication factor over here is a b m. This is what I'm talking about. So have a look. I have reduced the number of delay circuits by dividing by two. Initially, if I need a hundred delay circuits, now I need a fifty delay circuits. And this is what I have learned from my block diagram representation of the system. So that was the ultimate advantage. That was the ultimate. That was the final conclusion. Fine. So that's it about this topic. Okay. Now let me uh, have some reading from the book. If we have any important points. So I go to the start of block diagram. Okay. Very simple in natural ways. Right. Simulation and implementation is easy. You understand the behavior and properties of the system. Fine. Then what do you have? You write the equation. Presence of feedback is a direct consequence of recursive nature. So for recursive nature, what do you need? You need to know the previous output. The previous output comes from the feedback. The feedback comes from the present input. That is your, so you have your recursion involved. That point is also written over here. Memory state and whatever it is, initial rest, all these points are varying again. The next point I've told you that this is a very wide of views differentiator because that is sensitive to error and noise. Then what do you have? We use an integrator. And that's it, we don't have any other thing. So that's all about today. That's all about uh, the final topic from differential equations. See in the next lecture where maybe I solve the midterm paper as well. That was all about the contents given uh, by our university for the midterm course. If you have anything that I have not covered, so you can let me know in the comment section. I try to make a video on this. The topics after this, singularity functions and things like that are not included in our course. So I'm feeling a little tired. I will end this video over here. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.